everyone, and welcome back to my booktube channel, Lisa in Bookland. Law Felipora Kodai, which means Happy St. Patrick's Day in Irish. I hope you have a lovely day if you do celebrate. And in recognition of the day that's in it, I said I would do this quick tag, the St. Patrick's Day book tag, uh, which I saw Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading do yesterday, and I just said I'd do it really quickly and hopefully get it up in time today. I know it's been a while since my last video as well. I'm just back from a little holiday and I have a reading vlog filmed and also an individual book review, so expect to see more regular videos in the coming weeks. So just to say from the outset, I'm not going to tag anybody in this video because it'll be way too late, as I always do with these special videos, but uh, yeah. So the first question is, End of the Rainbow, what book did you have a hard time tracking down? So I'm not sure if this is even a valid answer for this question, because it's not like I was actively looking for this book because I didn't even expect to find it. I found a reference to online and I put it on my Victorian Literature TBR, but I like I, I was out of print, it was kind of an obscure classic, I wasn't expecting to find it. And one day I went to my local bookshop, very small, has a really random selection of secondhand books as well as some new ones, and I found it, it was on the shelf. I just happened to spot it, uh, The Real Charlotte by Edith Somerville and Martin Ross. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. I was happy out. Uh, it was much nicer to read it on uh, a physical book than an e-book. So the second question then is, A Pot of Gold, when you found the book, was it worth the quest? And the answer is yes. I was absolutely delighted to find this because I really, really enjoyed it. So it is an Anglo-Irish classic. It's set in the late 19th century in Ireland and it centres around uh, this woman called Charlotte. She is a kind of middle-aged spinster. And she very unwillingly and you know, ungraciously agrees to have her niece, Francie, who's a bit of a ragamuffin from Dublin, stay with her. It mostly centres around uh, Francie's love life. It's really just a really great portrait of Anglo-Irish society at that time in Ireland. And it's really funny as well. Charlotte is a brilliant character who <laughs> you just love to hate so yeah great great book I'll link my full individual book review below. Uh, so the third question is celebrating a rich heritage name a book that contains a well-developed culture. This was kind of a difficult question because I don't I, I kind of interpreted it as like really good world building and I don't read much fantasy at all really. So the main thing I read is historical fiction so I kind of interpreted this as just like a really convincing historical setting but the book I'm going to talk about it's not even really a historical setting it's an alternative historical setting and I just thought it was really convincingly set up and uh, that is Dominion by CJ Sansom. I discussed this book in great great detail in my December reading wrap up. It is obviously a fictionalised version of history where Germany won the Second World War and Britain is now like a satellite state of the Third Reich and it's set in the 1950s and yeah it's just the how con scaringly convincing it was. All the details were so well thought out. There was kind of references to the wider world. I just made it feel so real and it's a world that you really don't want to feel as so real and I actually was very like affected by this book which doesn't happen to me with a lot of books so yeah I would say it's not a culture we would obviously ever want but it's a culture that is extremely well developed in this book. The fourth question then is Shamrock Shakes what's your favourite food to snack on while reading? I have an awful sweet tooth and I'd say my absolute favourite thing to snack on while I'm reading is Dolly Mixtures, the sweets, um, but I try not to have them in the house because I have absolutely no self-control. Uh, but the obvious things would be tea. I really love tea. Um, I don't really drink any other type of tea that's not black tea. Maybe I will someday. Uh, confession time for the day that's in it. I do love to uh, have a glass of whiskey while I'm reading at the weekend. Uh, it just feels so indulgent, I think, and it doesn't get cold like tea, so you can a glass can last you an hour or two and you'll be sipping away. Really warms you up. Great for a sore throat, which I will be indulging tonight. Uh, usually Jameson's or uh, this one, Tullamore do if I'm feeling fancy. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my little confession today. So the next question is, Four Leaf Clover, name a book that you thought would just be a generic book, but turned out to be something great. There are so many books that I could mention for this prompt, uh, but I wanted to talk about two that I don't think I've mentioned before and uh, of different types. So the first one I'm going to mention is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, which is definitely a case of book two made me read it. I heard lots of people talking about it. As you'll have noticed, I don't read much romance at all, but something about this book really appeals to me. I suppose the fact that the main character, Stella, is neurodivergent and just... 
I don't know, the way that people were talking about it really made me interested in it. And I picked it up and I just absolutely loved it. And I've actually reread it many times since. Um, I'd say I've read it five or six times. And it's something just about the story that's in it really captures me. And the romance is so lovely. And uh, the main character, the main lead, whose name is escaping me now, he has a great storyline as well and it's just so respectful I think and I just I just love that book so yeah definitely was not expecting it to be a favourite book when I initially read it. And the second one I wanted to mention that is on a very different note and it's this book uh, A History of Loneliness by John Boyd. So I picked this up book mostly up on the title which I think is just a really hard-hitting and great title A History of Loneliness and the cover is such a beautiful cover you know how I like to see. I knew this was narrated by a priest but I didn't really know a lot more about it um, but I was not expecting it to be such a powerful and impactful book. Um, it's not a spoiler to say that it's about abuses within the Catholic Church um, but it's told over several timelines um, and it jumps back and forth between them and I suppose in each timeline it's like obviously the Catholic Church has a very different place in Irish society and the perception of it is very different in each of the timelines and when you're seeing it all through the perspective of Father Oron if anybody thinks that that might be it might be hard to read it from that perspective if a father or one isn't a perpetrator of anything awful so no fear you won't need to read about anything like that but I suppose it's just coming to the realisation of what has happened, what's been going on. I suppose he saw a lot but didn't really think about it or you know question what was happening and just um how much is he complacent in that kind of way and it was just such a thought-provoking and sad book and the title really he has a lot of problems in his own past and uh yeah I just I just, I just wasn't expecting this book to be so hard hitting and it left me thinking for a long time afterwards yeah it just made such an impact on me and it's a brilliant book I must return to it sometime it's not an easy read by any means. Next then is actually Irish whiskey what's your favourite tradition for St Patrick's Day? Uh, St Patrick's Day is actually one of my favourite days of the year I think it's kind of like Christmas but with a lot less pressured um and we're lucky enough like it's a public holiday in Ireland so we always get the day off or if it falls on the weekend we get like the Monday is a bank holiday in Louvre. I'm not a huge one for going to pubs when they're very very busy or like going to like an international big parade in Dublin or even in Galway City um, but I do love going to just my local parade which is very much like a very country like vintage tractors, local amateur floats, um, primary schools playing tin whistles that kind of thing but I just think you see people that you haven't seen for ages around. It's a good day for a family gathering. I'm not sure how many of my siblings will be joining us today but we always have my favourite dinner which is bacon and cabbage. I am that basic. I like to wear green, a kind of a new tradition uh, like for the last two or three years is I do like to spend a lot of the day reading uh, for the Irish Readathon. Sometimes I do go to mass and sometimes they say the prayers in Irish which is nice and so St Patrick's Day in my house is well known for being the start of the lambing season so uh, everybody will be very very busy for the next like four or five weeks. First lambs in my house are actually born last night. Twins, they're doing well, I'm happy to report. And uh, yeah, it's just a lovely day, I think. I really, I really enjoy St. Patrick's Day. So question seven then is, a pub, name a bar or pub in a book that you'd like to visit. So I do like a pub. I, I don't mean to say that I don't. Just uh, more of like a daytime affair for me. Uh, so my qualifications for an ideal pub is it has to be like old fashioned. Um, so like plenty of like timber, cushions, ideally like kind of individual little boots which are really cosy, open fires, perfect. So yeah, very old fashioned pub. Actually the hotel I just came back from, uh, that had the like perfect pub. Ideally there would be music but only kind of very kind of light background music um, that you could talk over without having to shout and make the person opposite you heard because I hate when you go out with a group and you can only talk to the person next to you because nobody else can hear you. I don't like that at all. Um, but going with that then, no dancing. I absolutely absolutely hate dancing. I, I, I just can't, even if I've had a bit to drink, I just can't be comfortable dancing. I just, it doesn't, my limbs won't do it. Uh, it was kind of hard to cope with the pub because I read so much historical fiction so I'd kind of have to go through this contortion in my head. Or oh, if I was a man, 
what pub would I like to go to? And then a lot of the pubs would be quite like problematic place that I wouldn't really like to hang out. So I have to admit, I did come back to the Three Broomsticks in the Harry Potter series. And I'm holding up this book because it's very heavily influenced by my love for uh, the third film in the series, The Prisoner of Azkaban, which uh, just, you know, it makes the Three Broomsticks look so cosy. I think it should be the perfect spot to call in after like a day of shopping in uh, Hogsmeade. Uh, probably I'd have bought a new book. I think it'd be a lovely spot where you could like hang around by yourself and just read your book for a while over a quiet drink or else you could uh, join some friends or maybe you'd meet some of the professors that were down for like midweek tipple from Hogwarts so yeah I just uh, I, I think I'd like to call it the three broomsticks or else like uh, the Leaky Cauldron or any of the pubs in Harry Potter really I think they seem really cosy and it probably goes with that like traditional vibe that I mentioned. So the final question then is a Kaylee, a group of characters you'd like to party with. So a Kaylee would be like a gathering for music and usually some dancing as well and kind of a traditional set dancing usually. So for this question I think I'd have to stick with the book of situations I'd like to be in which I think was the last video I made and say I would like to party with Anne and her friends in at Redmond in uh, Anne of the Island. I don't know why I'm holding up the other book, uh, but it's on this, It's the third book in this series. I just think we'd have such a wholesome time. I do think I would get on better with dancing in the past where there was like steps that you could learn and there was less dark and noise and more kind of candlelight and uh, tea involved. So uh, yeah, I just think that would be the event for me. And I also think I just really like uh, getting ready with Anne and her friends and then like the post-mortem afterwards at Patty's place so yeah I just I would love to be in that situation so that's it I hope you have a lovely day if you celebrate and yes thanks for listening thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday for my next video